Colorado shooting suspect James Holmes appeared sedated in court today, but no one has confirmed his mental health status or history. However, a recent study by the Secret Service says mass killers don't typically snap, they plan. To talk about the issue is Wendy Patrick, SDSU School of Business, former trial attorney and co-author of the revised bestseller Reading People, and David Peters. He's a licensed family psychotherapist with a private practice in Mission Valley. Thank you both for being here. Wendy, in your book, you say you can read people. What is your first reading or impression of uh, James Holmes? I wish I had more to work with. I think that's what a lot of people are saying is we've got some, some very interesting video footage when he was 18 where he doesn't look that unnatural. He looks pretty normal. Then we've got what's been described as an incredibly creepy voicemail message on his answering machine. So we, there's these two points in time. We want to know more about what happened in the interim. What, what was he doing? What did he look like? Who were his friends? If he had any, right. if he wasn't so socially withdrawn, it would be also great to have a social media presence to work with. We still haven't found that if it exists. So right now what we're struggling with is the absence of information that perhaps would have allowed us to read red flags that would have been there in the last couple of years. Yeah, and no baseline, no comparison. David, a lot of people are trying to make sense of this. Hindsight is twenty twenty. People are tossing out mental health terms, things like schizophrenia. Uh, what is schizophrenia briefly, and is this typical behavior of a schizophrenic? Well, we should say, of course, at the beginning, we don't know much more than we do know, and so it could be a number of different things. But if it was a mental illness, uh, we should note the majority of people with severe mental illnesses are victims of crime. They're not perpetrators of crime. Uh, in some rare instances, yes, someone who is experiencing delusions, uh, paranoid delusions, could it be motivated, if they had auditory hallucinations telling them to do so, they could be motivated toward violence. So with schizophrenia, you have someone who over time becomes more socially withdrawn. They don't enjoy social interaction. If it's paranoid schizophrenia, they would have a delusion that maybe they are special, maybe they're Jesus, maybe they're a prophet or something, or maybe they're the joker in this case. Uh, and they would have perhaps auditory hallucinations, command hallucinations, which tell the person, the voice in their head tells them to do certain things. But that's really slim. It's like a 99 to 1 per, it's very, very, very small percentage of schizophrenics who have this, this type of... Uh, yes, by and large, someone who's suffering schizophrenia is more a victim of violence on the street than they are a perpetrator of violence. Mm -hmm. All right. Definitely. Um, I was going to say, so Holmes' mother is reported as saying, uh, ABC mm -hmm. News called her, and she said, yes, you've got the right person when she was first told about these shootings. I'm going to ask you both this first. Wendy, what does that say to you? Can you imagine if the police showed up at your house and told you that your son or daughter had done something like this, what your first reaction would be? It is absolutely stunning and telling that her first reaction was, you've got the right guy. It tells us that this is a problem that's been going on for quite some time. Um, we, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a complicated issue. You can't just look at social isolation or we'd be pointing fingers at all right. kinds of people that exhibit some of those signs. But whatever it is that she observed, uh, you talk about change of behavior over time, Obviously, there were some serious red flags going on back since la the last time she had Because of that him. comment, David, what do you think? Yes, I can only imagine the sadness and the horror this woman oh. experienced. This was ABC News calling her saying, we've identified you as the mother of this gentleman, and uh, could you comment? And she said, yeah, you've got the right guy. So she knew something was going on. And what happens, this gentleman's not a small child. He's, not, he's under eight, or he's over 18. Right. So she's stuck with knowing that he's ill, or he's disturbed, uh, he's not res responding to her phone calls maybe. Maybe he stopped taking his medications and she knows that. And she she's knows praying something. for him. She knows but something. here's a situation where she knows it's going downhill fast and then she finds out what has happened. It, it's, it's a terrible tragedy for her and the yeah. family. Very sad. We have less than a minute left. I, w I wanted to ask you both if you could just name me a couple of top red flags, somebody who might act out violently, they haven't yet. Um, what to be watching out for, and let's start with you, Wendy. You know, one of the things that you've heard a lot of people telling, I know David will probably agree with this, but you want to look at the way somebody's been treated in the past and how they respond to it. Um, you know, humiliation, as David's pointed out, what, things that uh, actually wear on someone over time 
because obviously this kid didn't snap. He planned, planned this, this for so men. bullying, I mean, things like that. Oh. How about you, David? What would you say is a major red flag? In some cases, such as the school shootings we've seen, you know, pe people, young kids being bullied repeatedly and humiliated repeatedly, if they begin to socially withdraw or make threats, that would be a, a big red flag. In this case, um, if someone has a delusion about being special or about being a, a character in a movie, especially a violent character, or if someone who is acting this peculiarly using strange speech sp begins to uh, uh, verbalize threats or verbalize a fantasy of violence, that would definitely be a red flag we'd want to look for and get them help. All right. Unfortunately, I wish we could talk more. We have to stop. Uh, mm -hmm. If that happens, yeah, help them get some help. So, Wendy mm -hmm. and David, thank you both for being here. Thank you. It's good to be here.